Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you a book haul. So this is a book haul of 20 plus books that I have not bought because I'm sticking to my buying ban. So unless I say otherwise, these are all from publishers, but some of them here are from friends and giveaways. So let's get right down to the books. So the first book that I'm very excited to talk about and very excited to read is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baltree. I won the giveaway that Isabel and her sister host over on their Instagram, The Reader and The Chef. We've been good friends for a very, very long time and I've actually been entering those giveaways for a very, very long time. And this is the first time I've won one and I was so excited because I really, really want to read this book. I've heard so many brilliant things about it and everyone says if you enjoyed the House in the Cerulean Sea for cozy fantasy vibes you are going to enjoy this one too i think it's a fantasy book that's set around a coffee shop it sounds really cute it sounds really cozy and i just cannot wait to read it and i really like the uk edition because i prefer this cover but on the inside the end papers are the original cover which i think is such a nice touch and addition i've kept the glyph note from melissa and isabel which is why you can why you can see a big white square but yes so so happy to be able to read this one. The next book that I've got here is also a very just lovely gift that was kind of out of the blue from my best friend. So my best friend read The Love Hypothesis on my recommendation last year because it was my favourite romance book of last year and we often recommend romance books back and forwards to each other because that's one of the genres that we definitely cross on and so she got me Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood because she knows how much I enjoyed the first book and wanted me to have the opportunity to read her next one even though I was on my buying ban. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one and discussing it with her, of course. And yeah, I don't know too much about it. I haven't read the synopsis. I'm going to read it just because it's Ali Hazelwood. I know a lot of reviewers were disappointed because they said it was just the same thing, but in a different coat. But actually, I don't know if I'm really going to mind that, to be honest. I think I'm going to enjoy that, especially as I've waited over a year since reading The Love Hypothesis. So I'm going to have forgotten some things and be able to enjoy reliving them again. So love on the brain. I received the loveliest package from Sabine from Sabine's book nook and she included some unhaul books in there that I really wanted to get but she also just included a load of very very sweet and thoughtful items that made my heart swell especially all of the raven cycle ones and I was literally squealing when I saw the books that were included so let's talk about one of those books thank you so much Sabine it totally made my day and one of those books is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. And this is the US cover edition because I don't really love the UK editions for Angie Thomas's books. I've already read The Hate You Give. I already love it. And it's probably one of my favorite young adult contemporary books of all time. I think it's very important and so, so, so well written and so well handled. I've also read On the Come Up this year and absolutely adored it. And so I'm trying to get her books in the US covers because those are the covers I prefer. And so I'm just really happy to have The Hate You Give in an edition that I really like. I went to an event which was hosted by Books in My Bag, which were the Reader Awards. I talked about this in one of my previous hauls, I think my latest one, because I have been supporting them and working with them to kind of talk about the books and champion them. And at the event, there was a goodie bag and my goodie bag was Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson, which won an award in her category. And I'm so happy for Juno Dawson. She did a great acceptance speech. It was so nice to kind of just talk to her for a moment and tell her how much I loved Day Another Day, because it's one of my favorite Christmas books of all time. So yes, I'm very much looking forward to seeing her first venture into fantasy and the reviews for this have been pouring in and they've been so enthusiastic and so great and I know Juno Dawson writes so well, so I'm really looking forward to this. Also a hot pink cover, that's just a brilliant idea. You guys, when I opened the package from Sabine's book nook and got to this book, I think I like passed away, was revived and came back to life again. I just was shooketh. I was shooketh to my core. That's because she included The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefata. Proof. This is a proof. This is an arc of The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefata. This, this, like what? I, you know, I read The Raven Cycle so much later than it came out, like three years after it came out. So 
So I didn't even, I haven't really thought about proofs or advanced reader copies of these books because that was way before I was in the booktube game. I was blogging back then, but I wasn't part of the booktube game. And I actually heard about the series for the first time on blogs as it came out. I just read it three years later. So I didn't even consider the fact that I could ever hold a proof in my hand. And I am. Sabine, thank you so much. That's amazing. I just, and this is probably the most sought after because generally speaking, the Dream Thieves is people's favourites in this series and while the third one is my favourite I'm still just like how did I get this for free in my hands that is amazing I never conceived of it and it's going to be one of the treasured books in my collection now I cannot believe this I cannot I just I still haven't processed it <sighs> Sabine 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 another book that she unhauled was Witches Steeped in Gold by Cinnamon Smart and this is the fairy loot edition of the book that they did. So it's got a beautiful gold foiling with straight edges and there's beautiful artwork under the dust jacket and the book is foiled up and it just looks fantastic. And I'm all the more excited to have this because in another giveaway, I won a copy of Empress Crowned in Red, which is the second book in this series, and I didn't have the first one, so now I can actually start reading that duology next year. So thank you, or this year, by the time that you're seeing this haul. So thank you, Sabine. I hope I will love it more than you did, because I know she wasn't enraptured by the book, and I'm going to give it a fair chance. So now we're on to publishers, so thank you for a review copy of A Million to One by Adiva Jagrida, and this is a very popular young adult author. I haven't read any of her contemporary works yet, but she's releasing another one, and this is what the finished cover looks like, and it's set on the Titanic. There's a book inlaid with priceless jewels, and there's these suspicious characters who have to work together to pull off a heist to be able to steal it and there's one thing that all of these characters working on this heist don't know and that is that that ship is going to sink <laughs> and it just sounds like it's going to be so much fun I've heard that it's queer I've heard that it's funny and I've heard that it's so creative and those are all things I love so I'm really looking forward to reading this one and just seeing what I think of it for myself and finally get to try something by this author. These two books literally just arrived before I pressed film and they are proofs that were an unhaul from someone on Instagram, head in the pages. So thank you to, for sending those my way and for being happy to send an unhaul book. So first of all, I took Ellie Pilal is Brown by Christine Pilanayagam. And this one just sounds like it's gonna be a young adult contemporary that deals with themes that I typically tend to enjoy, which are about identity and understanding yourself and accepting yourself and also your culture. Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. And this is a second chance romance. I think if I'm correct, it's a retelling of, yes, it is a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen. And Persuasion is by no means my favorite Jane Austen. It's actually probably my least favorite. No, no, no. My least favorite is Pride and Prejudice. It's probably my second least favorite Jane Austen, which means I'm more open to reading retellings about it because they can change my mind and make me enjoy a narrative in a very different way. So I am curious to see if I'm going to enjoy this one. I've heard good things about it from some of my classics loving friends. So fingers crossed for me too. White Out, which is written by a flurry of authors. Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Nicola Yoon, Ashley Woodfolk, and the one and only Angie Thomas. And unlike Blackout, which was a short story collection and an anthology, which I was less interested in reading, this one is actually a novel, where we follow these teenagers who've been roped into pulling off an epic apology, but there's also lots and lots of snow falling, so will they be able to pull off this epic grand apology before Whiteout happens. And actually, by the time that this goes live, I hope to have finished reading this book because in December I'm just going to be reading Christmas books. So either that wrap up is up or coming, and you'll see my thoughts on this very soon. And I think this was the last one in the beautiful package of books that Sabine sent me. And I think this might be one of the ones that I'm really going to treasure as well, and that is. Jellico Road by Melina Marchetta. So this is a young adult book that I read when I was a teenager, kind of when I was 12, just, you know, on the brink of being a teenager, and it shook me and it blew my mind. It was probably one of the earliest reads of grief that I read that really touched me in my heart and really changed me as a person. And it was just before or soon after I lost my grandfather and experienced grief 
for the first time myself. So it was really impactful to me when I read it. And I read it from my primary school library because I was a library girl back then. Still kind of am, but more so back then. And so I never owned a copy of this book myself. Then I really wanted to own it once I got older and started buying books myself and I could not find it anywhere because this is an Australian author and Australian books are not distributed as well on this side of the globe. So I really struggled with being able to find it and now Sabine sent it my way. So thank you Sabine, I'm really going to treasure this as part of my collection. Thank you to the publisher for sending me a copy of My Mechanical Romance by Alexine Farrell Falmouth and this is a romance book where these two characters have to begrudgingly work together for this competition. One of them is very controlling, really wants this competition to go well and cares so much and the other character could not care less but is still very talented and a viable part to the team. So it sounds like an, an, not quite enemies to lovers, but like reluctant working together to lovers. It's by the author of The Atlas Six as well, just under a different name. So I'm very much curious. I don't have any interest in reading The Atlas Six, but I'm very interested in reading something by her and I love a good contemporary young adult romance book. So this sounds like it's just for me. We have Before You Suffocate Your Own Full Self by Danielle Evans. And she's the author of the short story collection, the Office of Historical Corrections. And this is her next short story collection. And I've talked about that book and I reviewed it in 2022 and I mentioned how there were highs and lows and there were stories I really liked and some that I didn't care about as much but there was enough there that I really liked enough for me to want to read more by her and I think if she can continue to step it up and bring more of those brilliant stories into this collection I'm gonna have a very good time with this. So I know this is posting after Christmas but I am filming this within the first week of December and my first Christmas gifts arrived and those are from Hannah from Ledette M who is one of my very good friends here on booktube and she knows that I'm going home for Christmas so she sent me Christmas things before I was going to be not in this flat so I could open them kind of in time and she sent me two gothic books and I guess she did that because we co-host Gothtober together and we both love a good gothic story. So the first one she got me is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James which is a gothic classic that I've been meaning to read for literally ever and now I have no excuse. I need to read this next year. I've got a beautiful Penguin Classics hardback. I collect these editions so I get to read it in one of the editions that I really love and I can't complain. I shall read this next year or this year by the time I'm seeing it. I need to stop confusing the years. And she also got me The Haunting of Aveline Jones by Phil Hicks which is a gothic middle grade fiction book and I actually first heard about this on Hannah's channel so it just seems so fitting and perfect that she was the one who got it for me so I'm really looking forward to kind of Enjoy more middle grade as I always love the genre but specifically gothic middle grade. Finishing off with some very interesting books here we have Promise Boys by Nick Brooks and this one is a young adult kind of mystery book where it's dark academia but we've got black main characters we love to see it we need to see more of that and it's in this preppy school where these three black boys have been framed for something that they did not do and they've got to solve the mystery and clear their own name and it sounds like it's going to have a lot of elements of that mystery fun to it but also examining dark academia culture examining racism and also bringing all the dark academia vibes that we could want in a book so looking forward to that don't mind if i do i was at a conference and quite randomly ended up coming home with the book of the most precious substance by sarah grant and it sounds a bit wild <laughs> and it was recommended to me by a work colleague who yeah loves a good wild book so raleigh i hope i'm gonna love this one as much as you did but it is about a book that is utterly amazing, utterly enthralling, and this character can't get enough of it. So she goes on a hunt to find the book of the most precious substance. That's the best way I can summarize it for you. It just sounds like it's gonna be a wild time. And so yeah, I went to a conference and I was in the Faber offices and I thought, I'm not gonna come home with a book. Lo and behold. I did. I was sent also the Memory Index by Julian R. Faker and this is a science fiction young adult book. I really need to step up my game with young adult science fiction because I mostly just tend to read adult science fiction which is fine but I want to see more of what the young adult sci-fi has to offer me especially as I wrote my whole dissertation on it. 
So in this one, memories are traded like currency and it's very hard to hold on to memories and it's set in that kind of world and it sounds like there's gonna be drama. In an alternate 1987, it's a bit of the steampunky element to sci-fi. Yes, it sounds like it's gonna be good. I don't feel like I can tell you too much, but I'll tell you more once I read it. It also came with deckled edges. I was so surprised because this was a review copy. This was a really sweet package that I got from the author or the author of A Lesser in Atlantis. If you were here last year, you'll know that I read this middle grade book and I had a very good time with it. And this is the sequel, The Jellyfish Jailbreak, which is by Natalie Lane. And I'm going to continue the series and let you know what I think of the second book in the series. It was such a nice, delightful read. And I actually took a peek at the acknowledgements and Olivia's catastrophe is mentioned in the acknowledgements for like supporting the first book, which is incredibly, incredibly sweet. So I shall definitely be getting to this in 2023 letting you know my thoughts on how the series is progressing. And then last but not least I've got two collections of poetry here to fuel my poetry loving soul and the first one is I Entered Without Words by Joy Gladding. This is quite an eclectic and unique poetry collection in the way that the poems are formatted on the page and when I took a peek inside I was a bit anxious about it because it's not exactly the way I like my poetry, not this abstract, but I'm going to give it a fair shot. And I read the first few and I was getting used to the style. So this, this, this will be tried. This will be tried. And then the next poetry collection is Please Make Me Pretty, I Don't Want to Die by Tawanda Mulalu. And it sounds like looking through it, it looks a bit more conventional in poetry layout but I'm hoping that the subject matter will be very, very good and I will be able to enjoy this collection as well. And I probably have either already read these or will be reading them very soon because as you know, poetry collections do not linger on my TBR because I love poetry and I race through it. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I have recently hauled in. Please let me know which books you've recently hauled, borrowed, acquired, or bought. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And don't forget, hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say. Onwards and upwards. Excelsior.